Good evening, and thank you for joining us tonight for Stations of the Cross. Stations of the Cross is a traditional service that takes some of the last moments of Jesus and just separates them out so that we can remember what was going on in the last moments of his life and, and develop some meaning and understanding from it. So over the next few minutes together, we are going to provide you those moments. In between each of the stations, we'll give you an opportunity to get quiet with God. Now that may be just sitting quietly in your room. It may deci be deciding to kneel and have a moment of just considering what God is doing uh, through Christ in your life. But we want you over the next few minutes to just push away the holiday aspect of Easter and get into the moment of what Christ really did on the cross. You'll hear two readings. One will be giving us the narrative of the actual events that took place in the life of Jesus. The second will be more of the meaning of it from the perspective of God and what God was accomplishing through Christ in our lives. We thank you and we hope that today this will be a moment where you can center your heart on Christ. The first station, Jesus is betrayed and abandoned. And immediately while he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign saying, the one I will kiss is the man. Seize him and lead him away under guard. And when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and he kissed him. And they laid hands on him and seized him. But one of those who stood by drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. And Jesus said to them, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. And they left him and fled. Who has believed what he has heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hid their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. With a kiss you were betrayed, and from you all did run. Because of your great love, we stay by your side. second station. Jesus is condemned to death. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him released for them Barabbas. And Pilate said to them, then what shall I do with the man you called the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, crucify him. And Pilate said to them, why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, crucify him. So Pilate wishing to satisfy the crowd, released for them Barabbas. And having scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Why did the nations rage and the people plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us burst their bonds apart and cast away their cords from us. They yelled, Crucify, and washed their hands. We declare the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world.
the third station. Jesus is scourged and crowned with thorns. Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him, and the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and they struck him with their hands. Why is your apparel red and your garments like his who treads in the winepress? I have trotted the winepress alone, and from the people no one was with me. I trod them in my anger and trampled them in my wrath. Their lifeblood spattered on my garments and stained all my apparel. For the day of vengeance was in my heart, and my year of redemption had come. I looked, but there was no one to help. I was appalled, but there was no one to uphold. So my own arm brought me salvation, and my wrath upheld me. With fists and thorns you were arrayed. Each strike, each blow, my sin do you know. The fourth station, Jesus carries his cross. So we delivered him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds we are healed. God placed upon you the cares of the world. To the hill you carried my cross. The fifth station, Simon of Cyrene helps Jesus carry the cross. And they compelled the passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. And they brought him to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Is it nothing to you? All you who pass by, look and see if there is any sorrow like my sorrow, which was brought upon me, which the Lord inflicted on the day of his fierce anger. In your death a stranger helped and served you. With our lives we live and honor you. The sixth station, Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. And there followed him a great multitude of the people and of women who were mourning and lamenting for him. But turning to them, Jesus said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming when they will say, Barren are the blessed and the wounds that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. 
Then they will bring and say to the mountains, fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do these things when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? How lonely sits the city that was full of people. How like a widow has she become, she who was great among the nations. She who was a princess among the provinces has become a slave. She weeps bitterly in the night with tears on her cheeks. Among all her lovers, she has none to comfort her. All her friends have dealt treacherously with her. They have become her enemies. For these things I weep. My eyes flow with tears. For a comforter is far from me, one to revive my spirit. My children are desolate, for the enemy has prevailed. On Calvary's road, they wept for you. On earthen roads, you restored my soul. The seventh station, Jesus is stripped. And they crucified him and divided his garments among them, casting lots for them to decide what each should take. They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far off. O you, my help, come quickly to my aid. Naked and humiliated, they cast your dignity aside. By your sacrifice, you covered us with grace. station. Jesus is nailed to the cross. I am poured out like water, and all of my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of the dead, for dogs encompass me. A company of evildoers encircles me. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like a sheep, that before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. With nails you were hung for our sins. The Lamb of God, the shepherd of our souls. The ninth station, Jesus is mocked by the crowd. And those who pass by deride him, wagging their heads and saying, Aha, you who destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes mocked him to one another, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ the king of Israel, 
Come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also reviled him. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by mankind and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They make mouths at me. They wag their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. You know my reproach and my shame and my dishonor. My foes are all known to you. Reproaches have broken my heart so that I am in despair. I looked for pity, but there was none, and for comforters, but I found none. They gave me poison for food, and for my thirst they gave me sour wine to drink. Where were the blind you made to see? Where were the thousands filled with bread? Where were the lepers healed by your touch? And where were the 12 who followed you so close? Lord Jesus, may our hearts always be yours. The tenth station, Jesus gives hope to a dying man. One of the criminals who were hanged next to him railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors, Yet he bore the sins of many and makes intercession for the transgressors. With your dying breath, you gave new life. Your mercy gives all sinners hope. The 11th station, Jesus dies on the cross. It was now about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Twelfth station. Jesus' body is removed from the cross and buried. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea 
named Joseph, who also was a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered be given to him. And Joseph took the body, and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud, and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had cut into a rock. And he rolled a great stone to the entrance of the tomb and went away. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. And as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of the people, and they made his grave with the wicked and with a rich man in his death, although he was, has no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Today he who hung the earth upon the waters is hung upon the cross. He who is king of the angels is arrayed in a crown of thorns. He who wraps the heavens in clouds is wrapped in the purple of mockery. He who in Jordan set Adam free receives blows upon his face. The bridegroom of the church is transfixed with nails. The son of the virgin is pierced with a spear. We venerate thy passion, O Christ. Show us also thy glorious resurrection. Amen. The life of Christ is full of deep meaning on the intention of God towards each and every one of us. He loves us and wants to bring about his kingdom, his love, his truth, and his resurrection power in each of us. Thank you for joining us tonight. And we invite you to join us this coming Sunday at 9.15 and 11 o'clock online as we continue to follow the journey of Christ to the victory that he gives you and I. Thank you.